E-bikes are so much fun, but with most ranging from about 1500 bucks to up to $5,000, you wanna make sure you properly take care of your e-bike. So as a professional car detailer for the last almost 18 years now, I'm gonna show you how I clean and protect and maintain my e-bike. And guys, make sure to stay tuned because I'm also going to be announcing the winner of the Work Pro uh, 15 millimeter dual action polisher as well in this video. Now obviously there's gonna be varying levels of dirt and grime buildup on these things, depending on if you have, if you have an e-bike that's made for the road versus a complete like full on mountain bike version. Um, this one is the perfect blend of the two. I got this one because I wanted something that I could ride with my kids, it's got the double seat, um, but also had enough suspension where I could take it off road and have some fun. So uh, this one is full suspension, front suspension, as well as the rear. This is from a company called EUI Bike. This is the S4 model and it's super fun and a fantastic value, but we'll get on in on that some more in a little bit here. Now when cleaning your e-bike, you wanna have a few tools uh, to get the job done efficiently and safely, right? First off, obviously a couple microfiber towels. These are just the basic Kirkland brand ones from Costco. Nothing crazy here, guys. We don't have to go super, super crazy with this. Just some basic microfibers uh, that are absorbent will be good enough. Uh, next up from there, a brush, right? We have some intricate pieces and, and components in here. We wanna be able to get in there and get those cleaned up. So we are using a nice little brush. Um, on top of that, we need a degreaser slash all-purpose cleaner. Um, I'm going to be using Kokemi Green Star. The reason I like using this stuff is because it does have uh, corrosion inhibitors in it. And I like that for the, especially for the metal components, I don't want to risk anything, uh, uh, you know, breaking down over time. So I like this product, but you can just use any uh, uh, all-purpose cleaner that you have. And one more pro tip, guys, I'm actually using the IK360 bottle. What this is, is it has a weighted straw. So no matter which way I spray, right, especially with the bike, I'm trying to spray under and get all these intricate parts, the straw will always stay in the solution so you don't have any problems with the sprayer. So again, not necessary, but a really cool option. Now along with the cleaning solution, we're also going to need a water source partially, right? So uh, a lot of people say not to use a pressure washer on these e-bikes, and I agree with that for the most part, but as a professional car detailer, um, my pressure washers are geared to be safe on paint and should be safe on this as well. So they're a lower PSI, higher GPM rating. So a lower pressure hitting the bike, but a higher flow of water, kind of more like a garden hose, but you get the extra power from it. So for this video, I'm using the Active 2.0. We're gonna be getting about 1200 PSI and close to two gallons per minute of flow from it. So that's awesome. And then um, for the other portions, right? There's a lot of electrical components on the bike. I don't wanna spray those with water. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for that is we're gonna be protecting those components using saran wrap. Very, very easy to do. And then uh, for the final wipe down and final uh, components that I didn't wanna spray, we're going to be using a waterless wash. Uh, what is a waterless wash? It is a spray on product. You just spray it on, it has emulsifiers in it. It'll help encapsulate the dirt, add lubrication, so when we wipe it away, it doesn't scratch and you're getting a really good clean with that. All right guys, so let's go ahead and get into this now. First things first though, we wanna protect the components that we don't want to get wet. So we're gonna go ahead and cover those with the saran wrap. Now this one does have a removable battery. I am not going to remove it just so we can show the process if you, you know, any, anything happens where you don't have your key to remove it or whatever else, you can still get your bike clean, no problem. Um, if you do remove it, it makes it a little bit easier. But again, for these purposes, I'm gonna show you how I do it without. So first things first, you're gonna make sure that the battery is off. We're gonna close the uh, charge port, make sure that that's closed so no water gets into that or anything gets into that. We're gonna start off with just a little spritz of the waterless wash on this. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to wrap it with saran wrap while it's dirty because it could potentially scratch it. So we're just gonna do that really quickly. Okay guys, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the waterless wash and we're going to mist it on. Nothing crazy, we don't have to completely like soak this thing, just mist it on. All that product is gonna do now is encapsulate the dirt and again, add lubrication so that we're not gonna be scratching this. So we just let it dwell for a little bit. Then I'll go in with my microfiber towel. We're gonna to start it off flat and when we wipe, we kind of roll up. And what this is doing is it's allowing yourself to pick up the dirt here and then move it down. So you're not constantly just rubbing dirt into the, into the uh, bike here. So we're just gonna do that. Make sure to flip your towel as you go so you're not reintroducing dirt. Okay, and then you get to a clean spot and you can just lightly buff it out. 
Now, another spot that you want to be concerned with is the display, your controller, uh, and also the gear shifter. Um, any other spots that you think you may have any issues with with water, cover them, right? Just be safe. And then also when you do introduce the water, stay back from those parts. You don't have to get up close and, and really saturate them. Just stay back from them and you'll be good. So for those components, we're going to do the same thing and just lightly go over them um, with the solution here just to remove any dirt before we wrap them up. All right, so now let's go ahead and take the saran wrap and wrap these components um, so that we're safe from the water. So really easy. You don't have to get any, anything intricate here, guys. Very simply, just cover it, right? And you can kind of wrap it around. That's good stuff with good uh, thing with saran wrap is that it is easily pliable. So you can really um, get it to cover everything that you want. All right, guys, so I got it all done. I'll show you really quickly, but for all you kids out there that are concerned, you know, you want to clean up your bike as well, I live in San Diego, kids all over the place from 10 to 15 years old are all out on the streets on these things, which is crazy to me um, with the cost of them, but that's what it is. If you're concerned with your mom getting mad at you about the saran wrap, just you know, obviously ask before you use it, but if she does get mad and be like, hey, you used all the saran wraps, she's like, mom, I had to clean my bike. Would you rather I use the saran wrap or ruin the thousands of dollar bike that, that you got me. So uh, there's, the, there's the answer to that. Let me go ahead and show you now. So as you can see guys, nothing crazy. I didn't go crazy. Just wanted to cover these components so that no water splashes onto them uh, just to be safe. Okay, now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and start with the actual wash process on this thing. So uh, there's a couple other things. You can just use a garden hose. You don't have to have a pressure washer. Keep that in mind. I have one, so I'm gonna use it. Um, let me get this stuff out of the way really quickly. So here's my pressure washer. Again, this is a lower PSI, higher GPM pressure washer. So we're good to go. I'm gonna start by just rinsing the whole bike down. Um, again, being really careful around the components that I don't wanna get completely wet. All right, I'm gonna come around the other side as well. All right, so we're good to go there. Let me make sure this is staying on. Okay, so we are good to go. Now this bike isn't super dirty. A lot of that dirt just came off from the initial rinse. But again, if the bike is dirtier, you're gonna wanna use a solution like this. So let's go ahead and prep this. This is a brand new bottle I just set up. Okay, so we're spraying now. And we're just gonna spray into the areas that I have the most concern, the most buildup on. Also guys, obviously when you saw I sprayed the wheel, I obviously didn't get in here, but what we'll do is we'll just move the bike forward and backwards so that we can get every component or every portion of the wheel and tire. Now for me, really, this solution, the main portion I'm gonna be using it on is the wheel and tire, just to get all that built up dirt that gets embedded in the rubber, get that dissolved out and then we'll be good to go. Now another thing to really uh, be concerned with is don't do this in direct sunlight, right? You wanna do it in the shade so you don't have to worry about this drying up quickly on you. Uh, just do it in the shade and you'll be good to go. All right guys, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and move it forward now so that I can get the rest of the uh, tires. Let's move it forward and backwards. Make sure that that's all good, front tire and rear tire. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our brush and just get into the spots that are tight and then we will also hit the wheels and tires with this as well. Now when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that the surface area is wet so that you have some sort of lubrication from the chemical and the water. It's not a ton of uh, lubrication here, um, but again, this is a flat, flat, flat black colorway bike. So I'm not too, too concerned with um, any scratches or anything like that on it. But if it's a glossy bike, just make sure you have enough lubrication on there. You can actually even use the waterless wash um, at this step as well, just to kind of add some lubrication while you're doing this. Make sure to get all your gears and all that kind of good stuff as well. Get all the dirt out of there. You can even brush out your chain. And another thing to note guys is once your brush starts getting too dirty like that, rinse it off. So that way you're not transferring all this dirt back onto the bike in a different spot, just like this. There we go, good to go again, and we'll continue on. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and rinse the bike off. Again, being cautious around the uh, electrical components. Again, I'm gonna roll it forward so I can get the rest of the tires. Okay, so now as you guys can see, the bike's all wet, all the dirt and everything has been removed from the wheels, tires, all the little tight crevice areas. 
um, everything is good to go. It's nice and clean, but still wet. So now we had need to dry it off and we can actually just use a microfiber towel or you can actually grab a leaf blower or something like that and blow it off. For my purposes though, I'm just gonna be using the microfiber towels. So I'm just gonna wipe down the seat really quickly and wipe down the other components that aren't supposed to get super wet, right? The ones I wanted to be uh, careful with. So I'm just gonna wipe around these. I don't have to get super detailed. Just wipe around so that nothing drips down onto it. Just go wipe this as well. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the saran wrap. Okay, now that that's removed, I'm going to actually be going back to the waterless wash. I'm gonna be using this as sort of a drying aid as well. So if there's any residual stuff on there or to add some lubrication, I'm just gonna spray the bike lightly. Nothing crazy here, guys, just lightly. A little mist on these components shouldn't be a big deal at all. Um, so we're just gonna go both sides. And what that's gonna do is, again, it's gonna add lubrication for my drying process and then also allow me to safely clean the areas that didn't get sprayed super hard. And guys, while I'm doing this, I wanna to talk to you about this bike specifically and the reason I went with this one. Um, here in San Diego, all, everyone has, uh, or a lot of people have the Super 73 bikes and they are super, super cool. Again, similar bike to this where it has all the front suspension, rear suspension. This has a thousand watt motor, um, fantastic bike uh, are the Super 73s. However, they're, I mean, for a comparable version, I think it's $3,500. This one comes in at $1,399. I did not want to spend 3,500 bucks. This thing is phenomenal. I couldn't be happier with it. I have a bunch of friends that do have the Super 73s. I, I like this personally better. I don't know, maybe just because of the value <laughs> that I found within this thing. Um, but yeah, it's an awesome bike. My kids and I go around uh, all the trails on it uh, around our house and have an absolute blast. They're able to just sit on the front. Again, I'm taller, so I'm able to sit on this rear seat. They sit on the front, put their feet up, and we go around town. Super, super fun. Um, not necessarily recommended, but they are my children and uh, I'm super safe with them. So keep that in mind as well. Um, I did reach out to this brand um, after I got this bike and let them know, hey, I'm gonna do a video on this thing, cleaning it up to see if they had any deals uh, that I could pass on to you guys. So I do have a, a little discount code. It's just, I'm Josh V. It'll get you an additional $30 off the bike. So for all of you who are looking at getting your kids an awesome Christmas gift or holiday gift here, um, for your little spoiled brats. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just kidding, guys. But again, it's a very expensive gift, right? So I understand that. Um, but this is a great option to be able to give them something that is incredibly cool, works phenomenally well, and at a fraction of the price compared to those Super 73s and some, other, uh, some of the other bikes out there. So um, yeah, I, I, love, I absolutely love this thing. It's super fast. I go about, it's got some different um, power selectors on the, on the controller here. And you can go from about... On one, I think it maxed out around like 18 miles per hour or something like that, but then if you go to level five, it goes like 30 miles per hour. So again, keep that in mind as well for your kids. If they're younger, just make sure you kind of lock it in at that, at that lower speed for them so that they don't get out of hand. Um, but yeah, if, if you're looking for a bike for your kid or yourself, again, I'm six foot two here, guys, and look. So normal, you can just sit up here and then you have that kind of clearance on the legs. For me though, I sit on the back like that. My kids sit up front and then it's way more comfortable for me. So I'm just gonna continue going around now, drying everything off. Again, as you can see, I'm not doing anything crazy here. It's just very, very basically going around, wiping it down, wiping up any of the spots that I missed. Again, because I have that waterless wash, if I didn't miss any spots, I can get in a little more detailed with this, spray in and wipe it up with the microfiber towel. All right, guys, so the bike is all clean and good to go. Uh, I absolutely love this thing. I think it's a super cool looking bike. Um, make sure after you clean it, do your normal maintenance, right? Uh, you know, lube up your chain or whatever else you wanna do to the bike to make sure everything's good. Now, another thing you could do potentially if you want to is the brakes. This one has disc brakes on it and you can actually wipe down the brake with some isopropyl alcohol. Um, the reason for doing that is this is gonna remove any of the oils that are on there just so your brakes perform properly, right? You don't want to uh, have any sort of oil on there where your brakes, you pull them and they're not stopping. These things can get up and going pretty fast so you wanna make sure your brakes function perfectly. All right, guys, now it is time to announce the winner of the Work Pro Polisher. Again, awesome dual action polisher. This thing retails for $85, I believe, on Amazon. Um, I was very, very impressed with it, con considering the build quality and everything at the price. Um, is there vibration in, the, in it? A little bit, yeah, there is. It's not a Rupes uh, polisher. However, if you're not doing a five hour correction, the vibration's not a big deal. If you're going around waxing your car, doing polishes, one steps, things like that, this thing's phenomenal. It's a great way to get into the detailing industry um, without spending a ton of money. Some of those other polishers can be four or 500 bucks. So 
this one to $85, a great starting point. Get this thing, get out, start working, uh, either on your own cars or start working on customer cars, getting stuff done, making some money. Then you can upgrade your polisher down the road, keep this as a backup. Um, but anyways, we are going to be giving this thing away. Um, I did a full review on this thing. I'll link it up here if you guys are interested in that to go check that out. Now I did announce in that video, all you had to do to win was just comment on the YouTube video and on the Instagram post. And basically I'm taking a collective of the both posts, right? The YouTube comments and the Instagram comments, putting it all in a uh, uh, Excel format and then doing a random selector to figure out who the winner is. So between YouTube and Instagram, we came to a total of 467 comments. And the winner is Robert Howe. He said, I'd love to give that machine a whirl. Thanks for the great content as always. So congratulations, Robert. Um, I will go back to that original video and let you know on there as well. I'll send you a message there. But congratulations. For everyone else, make sure you're subscribed because I will be doing a bunch more polisher giveaways. I have one coming from Vivor. I have the battery powered option um, and some other ones that I got from Amazon Prime Day to test out that were great values. So I will be giving all of those away as well. I don't need them. I'd rather have you guys have them so you can get started polishing your car. So that's it for today's video. Again, congratulations to Robert. And guys, be careful when you clean your bike. Don't saturate all the electrical components. But other than that, it's a great way to get, keep these things looking their best. Again, they're not a cheap investment, right? Although this one here from the EUI bike brand at $13.99 minus you know, a $30 discount if you use my code. Um, I think you know, it's a phenomenal bike. I absolutely love this thing. And again, the value there uh, compared to some of the others is phenomenal. So that's it for today's video, guys. Please make sure to like the video. Make sure you subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.